Morning guys, I've just woke up, it is 5.30 in the morning, I've got to eat something now because unfortunately I've got some terrible news to tell you guys, um, basically I've been injured for over a year, I've had an operation to, to fix the injury and it didn't work, um, so I've recently been for a few scans and um, I've got some really bad news that my hip needs major surgery on it my left hip through um aggressively kicking the ball too much over the years um, my labrum snapped ligaments need to be removed and um some like excess bone shaved down as well so it's really bad news i've got the operation today um didn't want to make it too public up until now because um i didn't want to feel like i was letting you guys down I've been dealing with it, but it's come to the stage now where um, I have to get it done. I can't physically. I'm performing at 40% in every video, and I hate that. But um, it's time I've got to get it sorted. So I'm going to go to the hospital today, show you guys the journey, show you what's up, and hopefully get this op done and be back on my feet in um, no time, guys. Yes, gang, what's happening? So we're making our way up to Coventry where um, I'm having the operation. Uh, the professor is um, one of the best in the country. He specializes in this type of operation solely and specifically for football players. Um, he said this incredible how many footballers get this same injury. They normally have this treatment over summer so people don't really know about it. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a footballing injury through um, over usage and repetitive strain on your hips and it's, it's predominantly your kicking legs so it's my left hip the sledgehammers caused this i've got away with the sledge for so many years and it's finally catching up on me now but he said after i had this operation i should be faster fitter more agile and have more sledge in the locker i'm looking forward to that one i can tell you that so this is the main hospital over here there's actually a private one that i'm going to to the side this operations cost me like eight grand so when you think about it i paid four grand for the hernia operation two mri scans which were a thousand pounds then i've had another scan three consultations and then this one so all in all i'm about 16 grand down <laughs> and my hip still ain't sorted yet so after this if my hip ain't sorted i'm gonna give up on life basically being injured 16 grand down um, is not where I want to be. But if it does come through and it is all right, and I get back to full fitness, not just 60%, then it will be perfect because there will be nothing better than smashing a sledgehammer top bins. Fit as a fiddle, mate. I can tell you that. Still got time to put a fresh pair of crep on, though. Look at the crep. Still got time to freshen up on that crep. Look at that. Here it is, this is the gaff. This is where the leading top surgeon in the country is preparing for the game of his life. Can he step up with a bit of swaz, dip, swerve and curve, knuckleball, bins, hat trick, walking out with a man in a match. This is Emily. Emily's um, from the hospital. She's allowing us to film everything, which is absolutely fantastic. Jez has just got to sign his life away here. Basically, yeah, anyone that's in, in, in this video has to get a release form signed, so Jez is just doing that now. So, so, where are we? What's about to happen? So, we're about an hour away from the operation. Um, I'm just having a quick x ray. Um, did have one before, but I'm guessing they just check out of everything a second time to make sure um, they know what they're working with, which is a mess. <laughs> my whole hip is a mess. But yeah, it's my left hand side. Um, I'm sure I've got this injury through repeatedly kicking the ball too hard. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's, it's healthy what what we do when we film sometimes, Jess. Mm. Do you know when we go over to a pitch and we just, from morning to afternoon, we're just smashing balls. Smashing balls, hammering balls, making videos. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, we've filmed with top level pro footballers shooting videos or shooting sessions and after an hour usually they call it in because it's too um, punishing on the body. We filmed with Pirlo once and um, he was only allowed what, 12 free kicks? 12 free kicks. 
due to over repetitive strain injury. And he was up for doing more, wasn't he? It was just the people protecting him. Yeah, I, I'm guessing like if he's your main asset and you think that any kick could tweak or pull something, you're not going to want to risk it. And Pirlo doesn't strike a ball as hard as the Wingrove. He does a lot of things, but he doesn't do a sledge You don't. The sledge has put me in this bed for this op. It's a blessing and a curse. Mate, at the same time. Mate, do you know what? All things that are good for you in life are bad for you. For example, should we listen to it? Chocolate. Alcohol. Sledgehammer. It's good for the soul, it's bad for the body. Bad for goalkeepers. Bad for goalies. Good for videos. Yeah, bad for my hip. So I'm going for an x ray now. Um, I'll be out in about five minutes. You can't come in because of the radiation. Stay out there. I'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit, mate. Yes guys, so we're just here with Professor Damien Griffin. Um, he is the world's leading hip surgeon. Um, he's done thousands of these um, surgical procedures, which I'm going to have later today. And um, we're in safe hands with this guy. He's gonna run us through um, the extent of our injury, my injury, how it kind of, um, how it's gonna affect me in the future um, and give you a bit of an insight on actually what's happened. So Billy, the problem you have in your hip is quite a common problem for footballers mm -hmm. and it's to do with the shape of your hip joint so everybody knows that the hip joints are ball and socket joint mm -hmm. um, so ideally you'd have a really round ball in a round socket um, but the ball of your hips not completely round it's got some uh, prominent bits some bulges you could think of it as a bit more egg shaped okay. than properly round and the consequence of that is that you've started to rub the edge of the socket and cause some damage to that. And that's what's causing your pain. Yeah. And we call this FAI syndrome. It's a big medical name, femoroacetabular impingement syndrome. Wow. <laughs> so that's a bit of a mouthful. Don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> Do you want to have a look at these pictures? Yeah, yeah, sure. So if I show you on the pictures here, these are the scans that we made of your left hip. Um, here you can see the pelvis on the left side. And that's got the socket in it just here. And then this is the top of your thigh bone, the femur. Okay. And at the top of the thigh bone, there's a ball that sits inside the socket. Um, this is a picture of the same hip, but taken from a slightly different position. And we can look at these pictures all the way around, because this is a three-dimensional model. And as we go around, there's the back of the hip. And if we look at the back of the hip, can you see that there's a little bit of a hollow here between yeah. the ball and the neck of the bone? Yeah. A little bit of a hollow there. And if you have a look this way, Jez, that means that if you have the ball sitting in the socket with a hollow like this, then you can rotate that a long way before it bangs into the edge of the socket. Yeah. If you didn't have that hollow there, then it would hit the edge of the socket quite quickly. You've got a nice big hollow at the back of your hip, but at the front of your hip, you've got a bulge instead. And that bulge is going to bang into the edge of the socket whenever you rotate. Mm -hmm. So, the, and that will impede movement as well, wouldn't it? It will. Yeah, yeah. And of course, in your in your work, yeah, kicking a football, it's all about being flexible, movement, exactly. agility, um, and this may be why footballers notice this problem more than other people. Do. Yeah. So, so, why does the bone? Why does that grow? Like, obviously, why does the how does the bulge appear? Well, we're not completely sure, um, but we think that it's it's partly a genetic thing, yeah. Um, so it may be something you're born with or that you develop as you grow. Mm. And we also think that part of it is to do with a lot of big forces on your hip. Okay. And I think you've got that particularly big kick. Mm. Sledgehammer. I understand that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. I've got it up right here. It's ridiculous force that must be going through his hip joint, through his leg, through his foot, ankle, everything. It's definitely not normal to kick a ball that hard. Let's have a look at it. Oh! So that's a, a tremendous acceleration. Yeah, in yeah. Effort, isn't it? I literally I follow through the ball with all my momentum. I swing my leg as hard as I can. A, a really big run up. Not many people take like the, the run up and go through the ball like um, I do. So you can imagine that all that force is being concentrated on your hip. Yeah. And so you need a hip that moves freely yeah. inside the socket. So when this bone is bulging as it does, 
that bangs into the edge of the socket yeah. is going to cause some damage. I think that your hip is in reasonably good condition still. There will be some damage there, yeah. but I think we can make it a lot better than it is now. Good. I love that. that pain. I love that. that pain. <laughs> I'll go there as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, Professor, here's a big question: What's the surgery going to look like? We're we're minutes away. I'm, you can see I'm quite nervous. I do actually feel quite nervous about this, but I'm happy but nervous. <laughs> well, we need to change this shape. That's the number one thing we've got to fix. So we've got to make the the ball properly round and make enough space around the ball so that you can move your hip properly. Yeah. So shaving down by the right. Yes. So we have special instruments that cut the bone, take tiny pieces of bone off and suck those little bits of bone out of the hip. And then the other thing I've got to do is to fix the damage that we've seen to the uh, edge of the socket where the cartilage is called the labrum and perhaps some damage inside the socket as well. We don't know how much damage there will be there so we've got to, got to explore that and fix it. So the operation will take a couple of hours yeah. um, and uh, you'll be probably asleep a little bit longer than that afterwards. Um, so you might get back to the ward after about three hours or so. Perfect. And then I'll come and see you afterwards and we'll start your physiotherapy straight away. Perfect, I'm ready for this. A bit nervous, but also excited. Excited that the prospect of coming out, doing the rehab and not having the pain that I've been living in for the last year. So thank you very much, Professor. It's a pleasure. Please do the best job you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> not long now, Bill, how do you feel? Mate, I, um, I feel actually quite good about this because I've been injured for so long and you know how long I've been injured for. Um, we've been filming videos like I'm not injured even and just going through the pain. Um, Painkillers, getting through it and it's, um, it's good to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel now. I'm going to have this operation and then come back fitter, stronger and better than ever. I mean, we put in, we put in a lot of graft because We've filmed so many videos before this operation that we didn't want there to be a break for the F2 family. So we literally put everything aside, even my health, and we, we battered it. And we've got loads of videos to show you guys, so you're not going to miss out on anything. So while I'm doing rehabs, there'll still be videos that nobody's seen before coming out. And then by the time the rehab's finished, then you'll see a new, fresh Billy Wingrove and Jeremy Lee. Can't wait. Um, I'm back in my room now. I feel pretty out of it. Um, waiting for the professor to come up and let me know um, how it went. In quite a lot of pain. Just give me some morphine for my hip. But, um, I'm straight on this machine that basically raises your knee up and down and puts ice cold water around the surrounding area to stop the um, swelling. Um, I think it went well. Actually, I, I don't got a clue if it went well or not. I wouldn't know, would I? But um, we'll find out in a bit. But I'm really, really, really out of the game. And tired, extremely tired. And in pain. And moaning. <laughs> so this is the first look at my operation. Um, looks really, really weird. Um, extremely swollen and leaking out water and blood. Um, I'm in quite a lot of pain to be honest, but um, yeah, it looks disgusting. <laughs> so I just had the professor come into the room and run me through how he felt the, the procedure went. Um, he said it was successful. He had loads of work to do. Um, he said my hip is as bad as what he thought, um, which is not good. He said my labour and the cartilage was completely damaged um, all around the ball and socket and he had to shave down an extreme amount of bone, which um, he said I'm going to be very sore over the next few days. Um, they've put me on this machine straight away, which basically stops everything seizing up. It's important that 
you keep the mobility there because the moment you seize, that's when the pain comes. So I'm on, I'm on morphine, cold mole, this machine, and what this does the front bit is it puts ice, freezing cold, into the hip joint, which obviously reduces the swelling, and um, yeah, and helps with pain as well. So I'll be on this until tonight. Couple of sleeping tablets. Wake up tomorrow morning, and then start the first session of physio. So this is my first physio session. You basically have to get the movement going straight away to stop the hip joint and the hip seizing up. So um, it's on the bike first, and then over with physio for some uh, manipulation and movement. It's really sore at the moment. I'm okay going around, but when I get to the top, I'm pushing it over, it's quite tough. It's quite aggressive how quickly you come out of surgery and then you're banging to rehab straight away, but I'm guessing that that gets everything moving again and um, the best chance of recovery if you're mobilised and enjoying it. So I've just finished my second gym session. I'm on a rehab program at the moment and um, basically my, my main focus from now on is to get fit for the Wembley Cup. Um, we've got about two months, that's no time for really. Recovery, recovery should take about three to four months before you're jogging, but I'm determined to get back for it. So um, no matter what the professor, the doctor, the physio say, um, it's going to be possible and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for you guys, I'm going to do it for the F2 family and I'm going to do it for Jezza because with me and Jez up front, hashtag United would get hashtag ripped apart. So um, that's my main focus guys, I'm going to do all I can to make this game um, and I want to be involved. Um, thank you for all your support. Um, as always, um, you give me that extra, you give me that extra bit of power, determination, to push through and in this case I'm going to need it to uh, make sure that I'm fit in time for this game so yeah don't be too down guys we've got loads of videos that we filmed before the um, operation so um, they're going to be posted there's going to be no gaps on YouTube we'll keep uploading and hopefully I'll be back before you know it guys love peace and techers mm -hmm.